Warp Silver here at Gaming. Continuing with episode 4 of Galactic Quest. Um, just outside the well, barn or warehouse, I don't know what we want to call it. Um, morning is upon us. Uh, look at the beautiful sunrise. Say goodnight, Moon. Say goodnight, Moon. On the red blood, however that book goes, I can't remember. Anyways, you see I've expanded out here. I've cleared some of this out. Because uh, I realized I needed leather for a couple of things. So I had to gather some cows, get them in pens, and try to secure this place. I just threw torches all over the place so nothing should spawn out here. Hello, Moo Moo Cows. Murr. Murr. Anyways. Also expanded the uh, garden a little bit. Let me gather my cotton. Oh! Yeah, I forgot. One of the things I looted in one of the chests was ender lily seeds. So I planted them, and they take forever to grow. I think it's, I don't know, seven days or something? And if you sleep, it doesn't speed it up. It takes whatever the equivalent, like seven, seven hours Minecraft time or something. I can't remember exactly what it is. But anyways, they, they take forever, you see. This one's at only 43, 14, and... Oh, this one's only 43% too, and then... Ow! They hurt you if you get too close. And, uh, they've been going for a while now, so, you know, they're free, um, uh, ender eyes or ender pearls when I'm all done with it, so I'll just let them go, and if I, how, how did you get out of the pen? Alright, well, time to harvest your leather. Thank you. Hey! Look at that. <laughs> I guess I realized I hadn't done that yet. That's why I got him. Okay. Good. So, I think I had... Okay, so... We'll head up here, and the next thing I wanted to do was uh, setting up thermal expansion. So, that's what we're going to do first. Oops. Let me get a good crafting table. Oh, I'm dropping everything. Look at me. I'm a mess. So, in this chest, I put some things I know I'll need um, to make some thermal uh, expansion items. Um, yeah, pull up thermal expansion in the NEI. And the first two things I want to make are a redstone furnace and a uh, pulverizer. So I'm going to start with the pulverizer. And the recipe is a machine frame, a piston, two pieces of flint, copper gears. So the copper gears are, if I recall, yeah, iron surrounded by copper. So I need two of these. Oops. So iron, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So two copper gears. Machine frame should just be glass. That's I don't want a hardened one. Where's the regular one? Come on, cycle through. Cycle through. There we go. Okay, iron tin gear. Okay. So we've got. Oh wait, no, it's iron surrounded by tin for a tin gear. See, it's different in build craft. It's something else uh, entirely different. And it's for iron, and I don't have the glasses downstairs. Of course it is. Glass! Glass! Where are you, glass? There you are. <laughs> Thought I had everything up here I needed? I clearly did not. Oh, something mysterious is going on underneath this. So there's the... Here's the flint. Oh, I actually remember to bring the flint up. And for the... Last part, which is the... I think I'll need another one of these for the, uh, for the furnace, too. Okay, redstone reception coil. Redstone reception coil, which is just gold between um, redstone. Well, let's see, did I process any gold? Did I process others? If no, why would I, right? So I'm going to go ahead and stick this nine to double it. And get going on this. I know I'm going to need two of these. So the rest of this I don't need. Now, as far as power generation, originally I was going to do the Magmatic Dynamo, which uses lava to power it, but without a way of getting consistent lava, uh, without having to pipe it all the way from the bottom, um, by using some, there's wireless transfer devices, uh, like this down here called a Tesseract, which if I shift it tells you, it'll... Uh, transfer, and whether it's items, power, or fluid from point A to point B anywhere, anywhere you want. Um, 
the other way I could move it is with an uh, an ender tank, which is probably what I want to do in the end. Let's see, ender tank. Let's look. Where is that ender tank? Uh, anyways, what the ender tank does is you put one in in the nether, or in, in any uh, any other dimension, and one in the other dimension, and it'll transfer the fluid. There it is, right there, ender tank. But I need like yeah, I need blaze rods. So once I go to the nether, I'll be able to make this, and this will probably be the easiest way. I'll make a pump. It'll pump the lava from the nether because there's like an infinite amount of uh, lava in the nether, just everywhere. It never ends. So I'll pump that uh, lava into here. It'll come out the other tank on this side, and then I can pipe that lava into my magmatic dynamos. But early on power, I'm going to go ahead and make a steam dynamo. Um, go back to that. Dynamo. Oops, I cannot spell. Dynamo. So you see there's a couple. Pneumatic dynamo, steam dynamo. And it's just copper. Oh, and this is original transmission core, which should be silver in the middle, which I didn't process either. So let me pull the gold out of here. And grab some silver, because I know I found some silver earlier. Lead silver. There we go. Process some silver while I'm at it. And I'll pick these up. Come on, cool. One, two, yay. I could change them to gold. Ingots. Maybe I should rearrange this thing. I don't know. I'm excited. Okay, so I need two transmission coils. So, boom, boom. One for each machine. So there's that. Now, a piston. I need. Oh man, I have all my cobblestone downstairs. I only need cobblestone and wood because I do need to make one piston. Um. Grab some wood. I don't need compressed cobble, just regular cobble. So, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. now if I recall correctly, it's this with a on the top, one piece of, uh, <laughs> oops, one piece of iron, and one piece of redstone should make a piston. Yay! All right, so we should be able to finish our pulverizer. Piston on top, flint on either side, machine frame, redstone reception coil and gears on either side. And boom! We have a basic pulverizer, which is exactly what I wanted. We'll put it, uh, I don't know, right here for now. Kind of a cool looking machine. And what's nice about thermal expansion machines is that they're really easy to configure. Um, if you look at the configuration, there's color coded, and what this diagram is here represents each side of the machine. The front, the bottom, the top, the left, the right, and the back. And they're color coded. So if you want something to be automatically pumped into this thing from the top of the machine, it'll automatically go in the blue position. Uh, when it's done processing, it can be pumped out of any of these three locations. But you can click on them to change the color and you can block uh, things up. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it all off. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up your own configuration. So right now, you can't automate anything in and out of it, but that's fine because I'm not using it yet. Um, the other thing that's new to thermal expansion now is augmentations. So it comes with some default uh, uh, default augmentations, um, which means it allows automatic output, which we talked about, and redstone control. That would be if I wanted to turn it on or off with a redstone signal, I probably won't need that because anytime I'm going to do something, I'm going to throw it in here and let it process away. Uh, reconfigurable sides, which is what I just showed you. So this one's limited to only three augmentations, but if you make those higher tier ones, um, in thermal expansion that have like there's a hardened um, let's see let's look at it hardened and resonant I think are the higher ones yeah when we looked at the recipe originally if you remember it showed different kinds of machine frames so if you make the higher tier machine frames you basically upgrade the machine as you go so you start with one make the next and when you get it all the way up to a resonant uh, version it will be able to have more augmentations which allow it to have more capacity and run a lot faster. But for base game now, I think the pulverizer's default speed compared to other processes is already fairly quick. So I'm not going to fuss about that too much. Let's see, let me pump my silver out. Da, 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 da. I feel like there should be a molten metal sound, like a blah, 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 almost like the lava sound effect when this pours out. Alas, there's not. So, one, two blocks, yay. Silver blocks. And I'll go ahead and make these into ingots. And uh, do this. Now, the redstone furnace <coughs> also needed the same machine frame. 
So that was a tin gear. <laughs> uh, surrounded by iron and glass for the base one. And if you remember, if I want to make a, the upgraded version, where's the, yeah. So if I wanted to make the next tier up, which would be hardened, I'd need Invar and Electrum gear. And it's not necessarily that difficult. I could do it right now. I'm just going to stick with the base game uh, stuff. Invar is a blend of uh, ferrous ore and iron ore. Um, let's see if I can show. Uh, make an Invar blend is, where's, there we go. Two iron dust and pulverized or nickel dust. And ferrous ore occurs naturally. Uh, you can find it. I actually have some already. And it's nice because you, you put in three dust and you get three ingots. So it's actually a really good uh, transfer rate. Um, you don't lose out on one. You know, there's always the fear that, oh, if I make this blend of materials, that I'll only get one ingot worth out of it. But no, it makes it's a three to three ratio, so it works out pretty well um, to make hardened units. And Electrum is only. I think that's gold and silver, or uh, yeah, gold and silver together. Let's, oops, go back one. Uh, what's the blend? Electrum blend, which is yep, uh, silver and gold dust, and that's also a two to two ratio. So that works out well. You don't you don't lose out on any materials, um, so that's good. Uh, anyways, so where was I? I needed to make the redstone furnace. Ooh, bricks! Shoot. Did I not? I think I have some leftover clay downstairs, actually. So I'll need two more copper gears. Um, which I don't think I made. Uh, no, I'll keep the frame down here. Uh, copper gears were iron, or was it tin? We'll find down here in a second, won't we? Nope. It's iron. I already have this. These will go on either side. And I already have the redstone I need. So what I need now was, oh, was it bricks? So I need to grab some clay. So I'll need four, I need eight clay. And yeah, good, I still have some left over. Let me keep the rest. Oh wait, I need to smelt that in a normal furnace. Hey, got some steak, yay. I'll put that in my foodstuffs. There's no room in my foodstuffs, oh well. So let's, and what you'll find out is that the redstone furnace, it smelts so much faster. Um, than just a standard furnace running by coal. And what it does is it just makes everything a little bit more efficient. Even by using steam power, which will require me to use coal and water, uh, it'll run off the uh, redstone flux it produces, the electricity basically that it produces, instead of burning the coal. So it's more efficient. Because what will end up happening is that, see this little flame, as this goes down, I'll end up wasting some of the burnt coal uh, in processing this, because I won't use all of it to process what I need. But with RF, it can, you can store that power and that energy there so you don't really lose out on any of the RF. It's just a more efficient way of using your materials. So you end up saving yourself a lot of coal um, in the end. So that's why you kind of want to uh, advance up to the higher level with the uh, things that are powered rather than things that just run off raw materials. Now, end game stuff with power. When power becomes a problem, and I can't produce enough to make, to run like all the machines I'll build and all the automation I want to run. Um, the the best mod for that, which is in this mod pack, is called Big Reactors, and I'll show you the ore that's related to that. It's called Yellowrite. It's basically uranium. Um, and I don't remember if I took that upstairs. Let's put it upstairs. And what Yellowrite will will uh, will work? It'll work just like fuel, like in a nuclear reactor. Um, yellow right, I know I had some. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah, you can, it, it'll also work. Uh, and other, see, I can grow it too with magical crops. If I get enough essence made out of it, I can, um, yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. So, I'll have a limitless supply of Eulorium when I want to. And there's the Eulorium ingot. Now, the Eulorium ingot is used to actually make the casing for the frame. So it, it's a big deal. It takes a lot of materials to make it. So that's why it's very much a late game um, thing. Because it just requires a whole lot of mess to even create the casing and, the, and the, the reactor itself to run it. And then you have to have the fuel on top of it to keep it going efficiently. So let's, okay, back to the furnace. So, so if I remember correctly, it'll be this. 
have a redstone furnace. Yay. So what I'll do... Now let me turn all these configs off. I don't need you open. And I'll close these all out. Okay. And what I want to do is to set this up, we want... <coughs> I'm, I'm not going to have... What I could do is I could put a chest here. In fact, let's see. Do I have an extra chest anywhere? I probably don't. But if I played, uh, placed a chest to the left, what I'd want to do is make this blue. So anything that touches the left side of this pulverizer will want to draw materials from that side of the of the uh, of the pulverizer. What I want to do is I want to spit it out to the right. So after it processes, so it takes the ore, it crushes it into dust. Then the dust will be extracted from here and enter here. Now, right now, because I had this turned off, it won't draw anything. So I want to again the blue. I want it to draw from the left and process through to the right. And then I, whoops, I forgot. And then orange. So after it's done smelting, it'll make an ingot and I can have it spit out into another chest here. So I could literally, if I wanted to, put a chest here, put it just there. I go mining. I have an inventory full of just raw ores. Throw it in this chest. And as long as there's enough power running to both machines, it'll crush it, process it, and then I'll have the finished ingots here. And this is probably, the, I, I believe, the cheapest and easiest early game uh, ore processing system you can have. It's just a no-brainer. It only requires two machines. And now I'm going to work on the... I'll turn my NEI back on. I need the steam dynamo, which is just a bunch of copper. Look at that. Okay, we can do that. So first things first, that's why I need that silver. That's right, I forgot. First, I'm going to need a redstone transmission coil. I need... Two gears. I need to process more copper when I'm done with this. Okay, so it was this, this, this. Uh, shit. Okay, I wanted to look again because I forgot already. Oh, I had it all wrong. <laughs> gears going top, not the bottom. Okay, transmission coil. Eh, and one piece of. Boom. Here we go. So, steam dynamo. What I'll do is I'll place this right here. And I open this interface. What it needs is what's going to happen is I need to fill this with water and I can put coal or charcoal in here. It'll burn it. It'll produce steam, which will uh, produce uh, what's called redstone flux, which is the energy that's uh, produced and used by thermal expansion. Um, items. Now, the other thing I'm going to need is, because it, it's not connected to it, so what I need to do is make leadstone f uh, flux crystals, and that's basically, it's wire. It's what uh, allows um, the power to be transferred from one device to another. It just works like cabling. Um, and the cheapest one, the low level, is leadstone uh, flux, flux ducts, which is just lead, uh, redstone, and uh, glass. So I have some lead. I didn't process the lead either. Man, I'm forgetting everything. So I'm going to throw some lead in here. <laughs> now that... Uh, uh, oh, I didn't know that, right? I hear a zombie somewhere. That's silver. I wonder why. Nine. So I'm going to throw my nine in here so I can double it. And I already have the redstone. I already have glass. I'll leave the rest of the I have in here. Oh, and this right here. These Certus Quartz... This is going to be another mid to late game operation that I'll make um, for material storage rather than having to use like iron chests or uh, java barrels. Um, it's based on the idea that you can break materials down into, into code, sort of into individual bits. And basically it's storing all of your items in a computer. Um, it's probably a little cheaty, but once again, just like with magical crops, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of materials to even get the system set up properly, so I feel like it's really not cheating. It's just some late game thing that you've kind of earned the right to produce it and use this system because you've done the the you know all the right stuff early on, which will allow you to do the easy stuff later. Besides, in the end, I want to make it simple to be able to just explore the galaxy um, without having to worry about where all my stuff is and having to process it. I just want to be able to let's see. Yep, eighteen. I just want to be able to explore the galaxy and build without having to worry about coming back to Earth to uh, mine stuff. Um, I just want to be able to 
This, and what happens with applied energistics is it, it can automate everything. It can automate the magical crop system where if I tell it, hey, I need some iron, it'll know to take iron essence from the iron, you know, um, plants that I've made, and it will create iron ore for me and then give it to me. And there's even a system that does it wirelessly through like an iPod looking thing or iPad looking object, so you can do it from anywhere. So let's see. All right, it gives me six, which is good. So the power comes out the top. Boom, boom. There we go. So once I'm able to turn this on, any of the power that comes out will be piped into these machines and be able to run them. So, oh, I need to eat. Uh, bleh, excuse me. <laughs> I burped. And I have one pipe left over. Now, actually, one of the things I could do. I think I can turn this. There we go. And what that'll do, that'll save me from using two pipes. So that's even more efficient than what I had before. Okay. So, first of all, let's just make a little bit of power. I, w I am going to work on making a pump to pump uh, water. Let's see. Right now, I'll just use my, my well. Now, I can't remember if... I have to input it from the GUI, or whether I can just dump it in there. Okay, it just accepts it. Okay, so there's the water. Uh oh. Now I guess I could use, or does it break down? Huh? Does it break down the coal? Let's see. Let me go grab some uh, coal from downstairs. Oh wait, no, I brought it upstairs already. Jeez Louise. So let's see if this works. It does. That's where the steam goes. So, the coal heats up the water, the water turns to steam, and then if, when I apply a redstone signal to this, it'll start generating some RF. So I'm going, you see how it's all lit up now? It's pretty cool. So I need to make a simple lever. Oop. Oh wait, it's a stick, isn't it? Durr. Stick. Cobble. Lever. So if I turn this on, why isn't this working? Did I do this wrong? See, now I'm going to have to investigate. Or is it just putting... Oh, no, no, no. There it is. It's filling the machines first before it fills its buffer. <laughs> That's what it is. So I don't need the switch. All right, I wasn't sure I did because I didn't have that augment in there. Ah, here we go. So this is the buffer. It's like an internal battery for the machine. And you'll see as the, the water's going down as it's producing more steam. So it's going to eventually run out of water. So ideally, if I want to run infinite, if I could have like a tree or a charcoal farm or, or something along those lines that constantly automatically pumps tr uh, charcoal into here, and then another on the other side it just automatically pumps water into here, I can have an infinite supply of steam. And it only holds 40,000 RF, which for my needs right now are, are great. Um, I don't need any more for this simple process. Um, so it's going to work just fine in the meantime. Yeah, right now it's only producing maximum power is 80 RF per tick. And what a tick is, is uh, everything that um, runs on Minecraft and its base code runs off a tick. And I, a tick basically is a second. So every second clicks over, or every few seconds clicks over, it generates 8 RF. And it's just the measure that this machine uses. There we go. It's almost full already. See, I mean, we really haven't been at it that long. Um, I'm already out of water. Or just about out of water. 49, 45 millibuckets. 41. And the buffer's full. So right now it's producing steam and it's wasting everything. So you know what I'm going to do? Uh, redstone signal high. What I'm going to do is... So it should turn it off. Enabled signal required high. Oh, lost all the water anyway. So I still have some steam left over, which will generate some power as it goes by. Um, but for right now, these are full up. So I'm actually in pretty good shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one raw ore. I'm going to show you how this works. Um, let's go ahead and do... Let's do the rest of this copper. Why not? Since all these base machines seems to run off a lot of copper. So what I'm going to do is throw the copper in there. You see this building up. Let's see if we can see it. Uh, see, so it transfers so fast. There we go. And it turned it into two pulverized copper, which is then smelted into copper ingots. 
So you can see how fast this is. I don't have to wait for the smeltery to melt it and then double the output. I don't have to worry about pouring it into both you know, the basin and the cast to make them individual ingots or nuggets or whatever. This just automatically turns ore to ingots and it doubles the output. Oh, and this is the other thing I forgot about ball prizes. There's also a chance um, that you get another uh, item out of it, another uh, dust out of it. With copper, it's gold. With iron, it's ferrous. Uh, I can't remember what the other ones are, but it's actually a small chance. The fact that I got four dust actually surprises me. So I'm actually getting bonus materials out of my raw materials. So we'll go ahead and just... Well, I don't need to throw the dust in here, because it's already dust. But I can throw that dust... Pulverized, or pulverized gold, excuse me. And now I just, I got free, I got four free gold ingots just from processing this through this way. I have a leak in my roof, are you serious? Oh, that stinks. So I'll put this here. So you see how nice and easy that was? I love this, this system. This is really easy to make. I don't have anything too fancy spancy. The only thing I have is a smeltery. And I could have done this without the smeltery. I just love my new weapons. <laughs> you see, I've been mining earlier, and my hammer is almost completely healed, and my pickaxe, pickaxe has complete durability back. And I, had, just because I haven't been using them, I haven't even been outside, which speeds up the the repair process. I'm wow. see the roof's made from half slabs, and I think between the creases of the half slabs, <laughs> it looks like it's leaking. So that's obnoxious. I might have to fix that. I don't know. But, so here's early game machines. We have made a lovely steam dynamo, which generates power for our two simple machines. And you'll see the, well, the buffer went down and filled up again because there's still steam in here. Uh, but the machines will draw when their internal buffer, they have their own internal buffer, drops down enough. Whatever buffer's in here will automatically transfer to the machines. If this goes any lower, then it'll automatically generate more steam. So, it's just a much more efficient way to do it. I can also, this redstone furnace doesn't just do metals. It acts like any furnace. I can cook meat in there. I can uh, cook whatever I would normally cook in a normal furnace inside of this. So, this is not a unitasker. It becomes uh, pretty awesome. Um, so, there's our first look at thermal expansion. I'm going to build some more machines. Of course, I'm going to do more mining. Before we leave, I'll go ahead and show you um, all the mining I did down below. Um, at level 12, I started to do some pretty simple strip mining with the hammer. And oh, look at that, it's already fully healed. I love it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Didn't have to do anything. I won't have to use more alamite. I won't have to make more alloy to repair it, because it just does it on its own. And all it took was that mossy stone to make those, you know, moss balls. And I'm not sure why moss balls would heal a tool. I'm just going to go with it, because it's been in the mod forever. And it's cool and easy to get to. So, so here's my big hole. You can see I haven't even been all that. But just tearing through this in a 3x3, three three, found another pocket of oil. The stuff is everywhere, which is fine because I'm going to need it to make fuel um, for my my rocket ships. Um, but I'll show you how this works. Now, the only downside to this is it won't work on this dirt, but boom, boom, boom. You see how fast this is? So I am just tearing through these ores. Now, the only, the biggest downside is that uh, I'm now collecting a metric ton of, <laughs> of cobblestone. Oh, there's a blue slime. Oh, but yeah, that's one of the things. The other way to get blue, gelatinous slime sometimes is that, and this has to be new to 7.10 because I've never noticed it before. Every now and again, one of these pops out of a, out of a block, out of a cobblestone block you, you make. And he's just kind of cute. He won't hurt you because he's a small slime. In fact, I've heard that if you put a name tag to him, he'll follow you around like a pet. Which I think is really cute. So, maybe I'll... I run into these guys all the time when strip mining. Look at this, I can just harvest all this coal. Boom. And the next big thing, through mechanism, as far as tools are concerned... Oh, stop interrupt. Alright, sorry, you have to die. Oh, another one! A spirit, that's new! Oh, maybe I shouldn't have killed him. I'm sorry, buddy. Look at him, he's floating! I've never seen that before! Random things, spirit entity. Okay, now it's just kind of creeping me out. Where are you going? And he's gone. Was that like the ghost of the slime I just killed? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, sorry, I've never seen that before. That is pretty cool. I wonder if I name, if I gave him a name tag, whether his ghost would have uh, would have lived on. I don't know. 
So, oh, some more sapphires. Look at that. Oh yeah, this is something else from Project Red. Um, and what? There's three or four different kinds. There's sapphires, rubies, peridots, and I guess that's it. These are not as durable as like diamonds are. We can make a diamond pickaxe, but you can make tools out of this stuff. The nice thing is that it's as fast as a um, as a diamond pickaxe, but doesn't have nearly the durability. So there's a trade-off. And of course, they're found in low levels, just like um, uh, just like diamonds are. But the other thing you can make is a saw. Now, what you do with the saw is that that's how you can make micro blocks, and I'll explain that later when I. When I get to decorating my my houses and my, um, you know, my houses and my warehouses and all the other buildings that I'm going to make, you use micro blocks to be really decorative with them. And what it allows you to do is shape blocks beyond just the standard uh, one by one. Like I can make, uh, like beyond just a slab, you can cut things into posts or pillars or whatever, and you can use any material to cut it down. Seen a torch in this little pocket. So I guess I'll leave it there for now. Oh, and here's raw silicon. Man, I keep running into stuff. Uh, I gathered some of this. This is integral to Galacticraft. You see, it's Galacticraft core. Uh, you you need this to make all the circuits uh, that are required to make all the uh, machines and all the rockets and stuff for Galacticraft. So, and it's really subtle in this texture pack. You see how it almost completely blends up. So you can miss it if you're not careful. Um, I just happened to run into it, so I noticed it as we were walking by, and I already got some, so I've probably got enough, but to make all the circuits and such, or they're called wafers in the mod, a basic wafer, a wafer, uh, you need to make a circuit fabricator and it blends, like, the silicone to something else, so, anyways, I said we were leaving. Here I am blabbering on, so... Thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you learned something about thermal expansion. I'm going to uh, continue to mine, of course, make next step. I promise I'm going to finish the house <laughs> before next episode, so we don't have to keep going down into the hole, and I'll take the time to move everything upstairs. Um, it's going to take forever, but that's what I get for not moving them earlier. Um, so thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And remember, the only true mistake is the one you learn nothing from. I'll see you guys later. Take care.